Hey everyone, how you doing today? Topic number three is something where I'm going to just get back, sit, listen, and let my jaw drop. And that is, what are some of the differences between the UK, the United Kingdom, and the US as far as real estate ownership, real estate lending, incomes, all of that stuff? Matt has a good friend. I'll let him tell the story. How you doing, buddy? Hey, I'm doing awesome, Mike. Doing awesome. I'm excited to share with folks today because Man, I'm with you, Mike. My jaw was dropping. He said a couple of these things to me this morning, and I was like, "That's not true." Yeah, he's you're like, lying. That's, "Yeah," he's like, "He's like, no, 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 that's true." And I was like, "Shut up." He's like, "No, really." I was like, "This is ridiculous." I we got to share this, people, with the, one of the timers. We got to share this with folks because they have no idea how good we have it here in the states. So, I mean, just to kind of generally take you through it. You know, this is a good buddy of mine in the UK. Um, he is not a banker. He's not a mortgage holder or a mortgage er. Um, he is a mortgage holder on the house that he has. Um, and so these are, this is just the finer data points that he kind of gave me through it. So we're not recommending investment in the UK by any stretch or to not invest in the UK. We're just sharing with you one guy's experience, yeah. one guy's deal, kind of like we share our experiences. But, you know, first thing is, is I know with all this stimulus talk, you know, they're talking about, we know what's coming, right? Like taxes, raising taxes, different tax programs, different tax rates on different things and different activities. And so you know, me personally, I hate that stuff because I think it picks winners and losers. And I just, I hate that. I like the free market to perform like the free market should perform. If everybody's on a level playing field, let it happen. Um, but one of the real quick things that they have there in the UK is their tax rate. So their tax rate for somebody that makes under 50K is 20%. No loopholes, no just programs. Flat. You make flat, 50, 20 you pay points. 10 grand. Okay. That's right. That's right. So think about for most people that make under 50K in the States, 90% of them, some crazy number, get money back. So they mm -hmm. literally don't pay their fair share. They're not paying into the system at all. Yeah. You know, they're getting a return on that. Yep. And again, just comparison one to the other, right? So if you make between $50,000 and $50,001 up to 100K, it's 40% income tax. Mm. There's a lot of people in the States who make between $50,000, 50,000 bucks and hundred K. There's a lot of people there that are paying nowhere near a real 40%. Oh, dude, I bet you their marginal tax rates in the teens. Agreed. It's yeah. probably 14, 15, maybe 16. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so you're talking about 40%. For those of you who aren't quick on the math or don't have a calculator sitting there by your phone, you make 55,000 bucks. That is 22 grand in taxes you are paying period. So your net adjusted income is 33,000 bucks is what you're taking home. Ouch. About eight, about what is that? 750 a week, 750, 800 bucks a week. Mm. <clears throat> it's or six, 650 to 750 a week. I mean, that's a lot less money than what, you know, people are used to. Yeah. Um, and then crazy is, is over hundred K is 50%. Just whack. Whack. 50%. Boom. Done. You make a hundred and $105,000. Boom. 52, five. You're paying. Enjoy. Hmm. that's tough, man. That's tough. That's a, that, I mean, holy cow. Like, yeah, what, we, we complain how? about our taxes. Maybe I should just shut up. <laughs> Cause I don't think, I mean, my marginal ahead. tax rate, even in my best income years, all together, fed state, you know, AMT. Cause AMT was a thing back then. Yep. I don't think I ever got over high thirties. I mean, I was like yeah. my worst tax year. Yep. I mean, the thing that you have over there is you've got, you know, healthcare, Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. you've got some things like that, yeah. um, but the, the bigger, yeah, yeah. It, it is, it is, it's just different. But the thing that you really have to look at is, is, the, is this the direction that we want our country to turn? Of course. I do not want our country to turn this direction because how many great, amazing startup companies start in the UK? No offense, UK, no offense. Not many. But yeah, Facebook, Google, I mean, the list is long and distinguished, you know, Rockbox. I mean, you can just go by what debuted on the exchange this week mm -hmm. and it's more than what UK had this year. Yeah. You know, and that's where that comes from is it comes from money being invested privately in innovation here in the States. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the mortgage side because we love mortgages so much. Mm -hmm. So in the States, three and a half percent down. If you're a veteran, you get the well-deserved zero percent down there. It's 20 percent for first time homebuyers. I just want to make sure I heard that right. So they don't have so it's not 20 percent for investors. It's 20 percent for, hey, I want to buy my own home. You got it. That's a little different. A little aggressive. Well, you know, yeah, it certainly bit. helps keeps values down. Yeah, no dope. Yeah, <laughs> that, that'll take you a little while to save. 
Right. Well, and that's the thing is, you know, he's, you know, he's got, you know, friends and in their mid thirties that are still working to accomplishing that type of a down payment because rents are generally higher and things like that. There, they have a lot more uh, folks that stay second generation in the house for a while longer while they, you know, save up that money and which something I totally agree with and support, or just get with a bunch of your friends and, you know, 500 bucks a head type of thing. Cause that's not going to break you, mm-hmm. especially when you're, you know, what you're making in here out of college first year, a lot of times can be 50, 60, 70,000 bucks there. They're starting under, under 25 grand. <clears throat> wow. Their average mm-hmm. income is under 25 grand. It is $23,000 outside of London. So if you just minus London from the equation, 23,000 pounds is what they make. All right. I'm going to do a conversion. What's a pound equal on a dollar? So it's like a buck 40. So it's like 33 grand. Okay. 33. That's what I was going for. 32, 33. Yep. Yeah. So outside London, ex London, because that's where you got yep. the bankers and the tech and all of that. Exactly. Uh, yep. 32 grand. Wow. That's okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So you're looking at, so, you know, you, you get a mortgage, you get, you're, you're putting 20 points down, 20% down. That's did, did he some, tell you what an average home costs? So that is the major range, right? So the UK is about 60,000 people. Okay. <clears throat> and I've looked at property over there kind of in, in and around his areas, mm-hmm. you know, there you can get a, the other thing too is space. Yeah. Right you know, again, no offense to UK because they got a really dense population pretty much everywhere, except yeah. for really, you know, hours away, mm-hmm. but you're looking at a sardine can, 160,000 bucks, Yeah, that's what you I know, was is, yeah, but you can, and you can get to the twos and to the threes and certainly easily, you know, fives and sevens and millions, but, but that's, that's a very small condo. So like, I just want, I just want to put that together, right. With everything you said, let's just call it 200 yeah. for easy math. Sure. So 200 grand. Yep. Undo cost or property cost. 20% down means you got to save 40 grand. And oh, by the way, you're making 32 grand a year. And oh, by the way, 32 grand a year, you're paying 20% taxes. So your take home is like 23, eight. And oh, by the way, you still have to eat. Yeah. You'll have to have transportation. It's it's worse, Mike, because it's there that that 200, that number that we're giving Mm -hmm. is the pounds number. Oh, so it still goes down to 23. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it goes down to 22,000. So it goes down back to the median of 20 or the, the, yeah, the median 23,000 bucks or that starting wage, excuse me, the, or the average wage is 23 K that's 23,000 pounds. Yeah. And your house is 200,000 pounds and you need 40,000 pounds as a yeah. deposit. Oh my God. Now the crazy thing is, is over there, here's what the government's done. Mm-hmm. They've done these help out programs. Oh, okay. And Yes, they sound as daunting as they are. <laughs> and so, so the American way is we do it ourselves. You know, we bring it together a team, we bring together helpers, but we're the ones on the line where the final, the buck stops with us. You know, that's really the American way. And there they have, you know, so as an example, so a $400,000 house or 400,000 pound house. So this is not a first time home buyer. This is somebody, you know, it's in their early thirties. They've been pretty successful. You know, they've lived in the top, you know, 10, 15% income wise there. And you're buying a 400,000 pound house. You're going to put 80 to hundred thousand dollars down. In this particular case, this person put down hundred thousand pounds. Um, then they got 80,000 pounds from the government to keep their payment lower. Okay. They got 80,000 pounds from the government. Now that government gives you that money for five years at zero interest on that 80,000 pounds. So far, so good. So, right. so, so far, it's nice. I like this yeah, program so it's far. It's nice. Sounds good so far, right? So far. But as we know, the devil's in the details. <laughs> exactly. So so a little bit further down the rabbit hole is, yeah, you're at your $100,000 or $80,000. It's free money for five years. After five years, it converts to about just under 2%. Okay. And so then, far, so good. Yep. Two more years, and it converts to just under 3%. <clears throat> All right. All right. So now it's that 3%. But on top of that, it's you still have your mortgage yep. for 220 k Yep. Plus you have the hundred thousand dollars that you put into it. Yep. Now this was done about five or six years ago. Okay. okay. So be, having been done about five or six years ago, you would say, all right, well, man, that 400,000 pound house must be worth like six or six fifty If it's anything like a lot of the parts of the States. Right. Okay. Yeah. That house just appraised for four twenty. 
Uh, so it had 5% appreciation in five years. Yep. And it's all of these programs, obviously, that hurt that, right? Because everything is very program, pro, programmatic. But here's the most interesting thing. The government, when you take out that 400,000, you put your 100,000 in, your 220 mortgage, and you have $80,000 from the government, that's 20% of the value yeah. of the purchase. Sure. Guess what they do when you try and sell? They come back and say, hey, remember us? Yeah, we're, you're paying us like, you know, just about 3% right now on that 80K. But now that you've sold, we're here to get our 20% of the profit too. They want the equity. They want their share of their, that is an amazing, that's, that's amazing. That's, yeah. cr that's crazy. That's it's so, insane. That's, right? that's not American, right? I've never no. paid Wells Fargo or Bank of America or any of my lenders for any of the upside, right? No. I get a loan. I, yeah. It's, it's part of the deal, right? I get all the upside. I get all the upside. I take the risk, but that's I get right. the upside. But this is how in America people become real estate millionaires. Exactly. Right? Mike and I don't own one piece of property. I'm going to go out on a limb, Mike. And mm -hmm. I don't know the Fresno market like you do, but I'm going to say there is not one property that you have that you bought five years ago that is worth 5% more. No, dude, I've had, uh, you, you go back 12 months. and <laughs> Exactly. More. And this is the thing. This is, you know, truly structured, planned economy versus not. Yeah. You know, is we have that freedom to win or to lose but on something like this, on an asset like this, you might lose, quote unquote, in value over time when it comes to having to sell on a specific point. Yeah, of course. But over a 10 year period, 20 year period, 30 year period, you're not, I mean, unless there was a chemical spill yeah, exactly. in, and in your town water supply. Yeah, exactly. yeah, I mean, and this is the thing is people have to be very careful of what they're wishing for, for, you know taxing wealth and taxing this and taxing, taxing, taxing. You have to be so careful because, you know, now he's going to, let's say again, five years later, he's now selling that house. So he's not kicking into that 3% and all that other stuff. Mm -hmm. He is going to sell it for only 20,000 more, but after he pays the 20%, mm -hmm. how much money does he really have left? Yeah. I mean, and realtor fees and transfer fees, when it's all said and done, he had five years of dead money, basically dead money on yeah. his hundred K. Yeah. The hundred so, K did nothing. Exactly. 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 So tell me how that's an awesome economy. It's, it's not. not. It's and you not. can't get wealthy doing it that way because what did he effectively do? Mike, nothing. he paid rent. Exactly. He gave his landlord a hundred thousand bucks to stay. Yeah. For the right to, to stay in his the, house, the right to have that mailbox. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. These are so, so folks, if you have any experience in the UK, let us know where we're right or wrong. Uh, this is clearly just eye-opening differences. Uh, and, and kind of summarizing our three talks today, right? We start off with getting on the property ladder. Let's hopefully get that average age from 33 down to 23 yes. or 25 or 27, something better. I'd don't be happy in the 20s for now. Yeah, anything, right? Yeah. yeah house hack, yeah. three and a half yeah. percent loan, zero percent. Second, inflation, let it be your friend. Yes. Right, either- you know, be a consumer and, and, and let it eat your income or own assets like the rich, like we like to flog on national TV. And then don't, be careful what you wish for, right? The UK versus the US, just some lending standards, 20%, taxes, all that great stuff. So Matt, I appreciate your time this time, this fun Sunday morning. Any closing thoughts? Um, no, I think we nailed it. I mean, Mike, that's great content right there. Yeah. That's, you know, so yeah, I mean, and, and again, content, you know, please questions, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm always happy to jump in the feeds too. And um, happy to, you know, see what people throw out there and uh, lumberjack landlord will be putting content out this week. So we're excited yes. for, yeah, finally, we're going through some of the projects and some tips and some tricks for folks, you know, and so yeah, we're excited to excited to finally be engaging with folks. But uh, so next week, just to put you on the spot, we're going to be announcing, go to lumberjack landlord Lumberjack have, landlord on youtube yeah have what five videos we're gonna yeah dear god mike you're putting the pressure on yeah, yeah i mean exactly. i'm no zoo i'm not i mean zuber's a machine people you know this <laughs> like if you have if you subscribe and you have that bell oh, you, know, good you, Lord. Think, you think you think you have a cat with a collar with a bell on it you know every yeah. single time boots decides to walk down the stairs you know <laughs> yeah so we've got yeah we've got a few pieces just trying to introduce the channel talking to some folks we've got some uh just a couple 
uh, really cool guests around um, foreclosure stuff because we're starting to see that tick up and the opportunity that's there. Um, because again, you don't have to be this seasoned investor to buy foreclosures. Absolutely. You know, they're going to be available. So yeah, we'll take some people through that stuff. And then I don't know, you know that I heard a number. Uh, <laughs> damn, I feel like I'm back in, you know, <laughs> VP of sales just reared his ugly head again. Damn it, Mike. Um, yeah, I think we're probably going to be between three and five pieces of content. For nice. Week. Five pieces. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> And so you guys just know if you don't work in high tech and you don't have a VP of sales, never give them a range because they always pick the top of the range. That's what he just did. He just VP to VP everybody. That's what he just, that's what just happened. That is awesome. So you're saying five. Yeah. Well yeah, done. Yeah, I got it. I'll write five yeah. down. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that way, when, even if I surprise myself and get to five, he's going to be like, all right. So you got yeah, to where so you thought did. you would. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. What, what happened? What happened with getting past that? Did yeah, you have what a happened? Plan? Yeah, you have accelerators? A plan yeah. <laughs> oh, this is so much fun. <laughs> you're the best, Mike. You're the all best. Right. I love Th it. Have a wonderful day, Matt. Take care. Awesome. You too, Mike. Take Thanks. care.